Today on Real Life, Kids and Finances with Christy Ziegler. The Mom Talk moms are making goals. And Pastor Dan Willis starts his word for today. Today on Real Life. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, he empowers you. And the Bible is your guide to abundant life. I'm Don Black. I'm your host with my wife, Terry, Hi. and our founder, Norma Bixler. Yay. Yay, we're here. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. You know, it, it, is, it is really hard to understand or believe that we are in a brand new year. Oh, 2015. Yeah. Yes, Hooray. 2015. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you, how was your New Year's celebration? Did you watch the program, K Terry? Did you watch? Oh, I, oh yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think? Oh, I, I Phil Kenke was awesome. He's such a great, great musician. It was great. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to watch him play guitar. Yes. It is. You know, he uses everything. I know. <laughs> I never saw anybody play the guitar that, you know, speaks in the... Okay. All of the he guitar. Whenever he does, and yeah. he, and he mm -hmm. just does all kinds of things. I know. It's so, it, it was so much fun to have him. It was. He's delightful. Mm -hmm. well, I hope you had the opportunity in, uh, in our family to watch the New Year's program. We, we played it enough. I mean, we, <laughs> we had it on all day on New Year's Day. Not yeah. all day, but often mm -hmm. on New Year's Day. And, At the appropriate and, time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so, too. It was a great way to kick in the new year. We had communion together. We had a dedication prayer. Mm -hmm. So it's a fantastic, fantastic 2015. Absolutely. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk it? Yeah. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? Mm -hmm. I, and I got to tell you, uh, one thing I, as we start this program, I want to say to you, our family and our friends and our partners, we are asking for your prayers. We need your prayers. You know, uh, I've been talking a lot about our devotional God's Word for Real Life. Many, 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 many of you have asked for it, and you might ask yourself, why don't I have it? Why don't I have it? And the reason you don't have it is because it's not back from the printers. And the printers have had it for a long time. So I'm gonna, I want you to pray with me. Now, I think we ought to pray right now. Pray that the Lord would release this. Not that he's bound it up, but we need his special anointing to get it out of their hands, mm -hmm. get it into our hands so we can get it into your hands. That sounds like a Because you can't go along with it. And here we are on the fifth. We should have had it all to you. So I apologize that you don't have this devotion yet, but I want you to be patient. God's doing something in it and the enemy's resisting it. So it's going to have great impact. So let's pray right now. Would you bow your head and pray with me? Father, we release this devotional from this printer in Jesus' name. We ask for favor and grace as these printers make these books, ship these books. We can ship them and get them to the hands of our partners. So we ask this, release it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yeah. I, you know, sometimes that's how it goes. You know, sometimes you've got to fight to get mm -hmm. to where you, God wants you to go. Right. I remember Absolutely. we had a friend that cut an album way back, and, <laughs> and he sent the money and done everything, and he just couldn't get it. So we wow. had a prayer meeting, and we knew he had a problem, and he came, and we prayed. We did a Jericho march around the parsonage of the home we were in, uh -huh. and it came the next two wow. days. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, maybe we can do a Jericho march in the snow. <laughs> Well, Terry broke the news. It oh, did snow here. Yes, For those who are did. not in the western Pennsylvania area, we got some snow. That's right. Not deep did. snow yet, but they say it's coming. So, and maybe you've got it mm -hmm. wherever you are too, but it is cold and it is snow. I believe that, that God intervenes. Mm -hmm. Well, I know he does. Yeah, he does. He, he does. Mm -hmm. and Ask and you shall receive. That's right. Well, That's and right. today we have a special guest on the program who's going to talk about spiritual warfare. Good. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about how to recognize the enemy, Absolutely. how to how to deal with the enemy, and then how to find the victory in in in, in our spiritual mm -hmm. uh, wrestling That's match. That's going to be good. Now, oh, I'm yeah. looking forward well, to it. Well, it's a great way to start our year too. Yes, because it is. we want to start off with having good good thoughts, good habits, and victory in our lives. Amen. Well, Amen. we want to encourage you to if you're if you're in the middle of a battle. Mm -hmm. Whether it's in your health, whether it's with your families, whether it's in some some situation like I am with, with this mag with this book, God will give us the victory. Mm -hmm. 
So stay tuned because we're going to talk about spiritual warfare. You're not going to hear a lot about spiritual warfare on a lot of programs, but here we will. You're going to, we're going to talk about how to get the victory, how to win the victory, how to stand victorious. Very, very important. Well, let's go to the scripture, mm-hmm. Isaiah 64, 8. But now, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay. You are potter. And we all are the works of your hands. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's yeah, the potter. He sure is. Well, We're this lump of clay. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> well, I have so many clothes on today, I feel like a lump. <laughs> so maybe he'll work with me. <laughs> well, we have our prayer partners here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I know some of you have been waiting for today. And I hope you're going to give us some testimonies of things God's done. But... If you need prayer, you know we're right here waiting for you. And so why don't you call right now and let us know and keep our prayer partners busy. <laughs> <laughs> they stay warm. I, I just want to remind you of something. And if you had the devotional, to, this is our today's devotional. Your birth was not an accident nor a matter of chance. It wasn't just a matter of chance that you are here today. God is your master designer. He created each of us with special talents and with special abilities to live a life of divine destiny. You just don't live to live. God's got a purpose for your life. In Jesus, you have everything that you need. Listen to that. In Jesus, you have everything you need to live successfully. So reach out and hold on to that truth. He's the, pot, he's the, the master uh, potter. He's given you everything you need to, to live successfully. Clay is clay. God makes it into art. He sure does. And speaking of art, hey, we have some wonderful music from Grace Church Worship Team, and they're singing Freedom. Whom the sun sets free is truly free indeed.
him. Awesome. Freedom. What a great way for us to start this uh, New Year's is by singing about freedom we have in Christ. No more shackles. Thank Amen. you to Grace Amen. Church worship team from Dumfries, Virginia for sharing that with us. Now, don't you wish that you had learned how to deal with money earlier than you did? We are never too young to start learning how to be good stewards of the finances God has entrusted us with. Christy Ziegler joins us to share her ideas for training our children to handle money on this week's Real Money. We are talking about kids and money. So this is important for you and I because we're both moms. We both have children. I have three, you have two. And so where do we begin with kids and money? How do we start teaching them, making it important to them? Well, I think it's such a challenge today because for most of us, we are in a cashless society. Or if you think about our children and where they're concerned, yes. and whereas when we were kids, mm -hmm. we remember saving our pennies and nickels and yes. dimes for whatever project we were doing. Maybe it was 7-Eleven exactly. with a little quarters. Exactly, traded yeah. in. And I think that that was an important learning opportunity, mm -hmm. that there was a trade-off yeah. um, that you had to give in order to get. That yeah, you know, there was good. a value associated with something we were getting. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was one of the earliest ways that we learned um, again about choices in life and that there are consequences was through money well today our kids don't see real money very often and in fact I had an experience I'm embarrassed to say you know just a few years ago and you know I am a financial planner yes. and my kids came home and I realized they didn't know the difference between a penny and a nickel and a dime and yeah. they hadn't learned it in school yet but I felt like I should have really failed them yeah. as a mom so wow. yeah it's a real challenge these days to find ways to start talking about the value of things yes. and that there are values associated with all the stuff that we have access to. And you like to use words like delayed gratification. I and do. Not giving them everything that they demand. I do. Really? And I, mean, I think. Now, are you good at that as a young mom? I. It's a challenge. I'll it be is. honest. It is. Don't a, you want to give them everything? And it's easier to give them sometimes, it right? Is. The, it just is. when you're out shopping and you know you think, oh gosh, yes, have that little piece of gum or whatever it is, so right. I can get on with my grocery shopping. Yes. But it's so important to not do that mm -hmm. and to teach them that they don't get to have everything and you know about this cashless society our children have received mm -hmm. but they haven't seen you know the giving that goes okay. with that and the back-end responsibilities and hard work that come through you know jobs to provide for them mm -hmm. so I think starting at a very young age teaching basic concepts that are not necessarily money concepts but if they don't get them they're never going to be able to be good managers of money and those are things like delayed gratification yes. and impulse control and self-discipline mm -hmm. Ooh, those are like <laughs> our least favorite words in this society. Yes, boundaries, right? Boundaries. But you have, what you came up with the chart. We do. So I think a good way um, for parents to do it with young kids as young mm -hmm. as three, you know, yeah. three and four year olds is to have some charts, reward charts. Yeah. And um, you know, we offer some on our Shine Bright Kids website, which yeah. are great to download and, and simple. I'm going but to download those. <laughs> well, They're they, really they good. work. And when your kids are really little, mm -hmm. you know, don't make it impossible. Um, have just a right. few a few things that they could earn stars for. So, yeah. you know, maybe it's. Um, trying everything on their plate, putting away their toys, being kind to a sibling, mm -hmm. but start identifying, you know, a reward with a good behavior. Yeah. Um, and sometimes just something that you caught them in the act of doing. But then when you're out, um, you need to have a reward chart that goes with that. So there are responsibilities that are okay. expected of them, uh -huh. but then there's reward charts and make it not all things, not all just stuff, right. but time. Yeah. So maybe it's a special outing with mom mm -hmm. or, a trip to get a, a snack with dad, yeah. um, a craft that you yeah. do together. But so now when you're out and you're shopping or doing whatever, long before they understand dollars and cents, mm -hmm. you can talk about, well, you can have that little piece of gum that you saw, but that's going to cost you three stars. And so now they start oh. thinking, well, if I get my three stars now, that means I'm not going to get the 10 star reward that I was so close to achieving. Yeah. And they do start understanding, again, that trade off. It's mm -hmm. a currency. Then as they yeah. get older, you can turn it into dollars and cents. And I think it's a good way to. Now, make I have those a teenage last. daughter, mm -hmm. you know, and for the, the teenage moms watching, do you, or, or what is an appropriate amount of. Uh, 
of money that you give them, like an allowance a week, or do I, they mm -hmm. work for that allowance? I think or it depends you on your suggest? family and what the appropriate amount is, but uh -huh. I think there's kind of two things that go with allowance. There are expected chores that are every day because we all have things that we have to do to be in the family, yes. but then there's extra, and maybe that's what the allowance is for. And, um, and we give our kids the opportunity to earn more, so we actually have a bucket of extra chores if they're feeling motivated that they can really? go earn some extra star points. You work. are super organized. Well, we have our moments. <laughs> super, uber, amazingly organized. I'm thinking, man, I want to be her kid. And then... Well, I think, you know, we all we all struggle with these things, but mm -hmm. talking about it is so important yeah. and just making it part of your everyday life. Right. And, and, that, and see, I'm not naturally wired like that where I can lay out all the chores. So you having done that groundwork and helping moms like me that just think life should be fun, oh, you know, <laughs> we're here to have a good time. but. You know, we have to be responsible and wise. Really, God is entrusting with us with money and time and our talent and our treasure. We need to be good stewards. And we're teaching these little people how to be good stewards. Well, that is the goal, to raise independent, responsible, compassionate adults, yes. right? And I think, you know, Amen. being a good manager of money is just critical to that. So Wow. Well, thank you for being so sweet and beautiful and smart. And, and thank you for creating this Shine Bright company. And... And I believe that it will help many, many children well, and parents you. learn that responsibility of money. And, and uh, we will be and can be all that God has created us to be. Amen? Amen. Thank and you. And we can contribute back to society. <laughs> what a thought. Thank you for being oh, here. Thank you. You're awesome. On Real Life, author Kyle Winkler discusses his ministry and newest book, Silent Satan. He'll explain how to shut down attacks from the enemy. Dan Willis, senior pastor of Lighthouse Church, begins a new teaching series about faith on the word for today. And coming up next, the moms address the issue of boredom and how to solve it on Mom Talk. That's next on Real Life. Connect online with Cornerstone Network. Find us at Facebook.com slash Cornerstone TV and click the like button. You'll see show updates, exclusive videos, inspiring scripture, and lots of behind the scenes photos. If you have a question or a comment, post it on our page. We want to hear from you. Connect online with Cornerstone at Facebook.com slash Cornerstone TV. It's Sister to Sister Wednesdays. We have an incredible show for you. What's happening? We're talking faith. We're talking enabling. We're talking fear. Do you let fear stop you? We're talking about would you call the police on your teens? And we're talking luxury. You're so luxurious. Same for you, my sister. I love you. I love you. Can you believe it's 2015? This is going to be a year of immense blessing. Can't you just feel it? Here at Cornerstone, we want to pour blessings into your life through this special New Year's offer. When you give to us your regular partner gift this month, you get to choose your thank you gift. It's a little something from us to you. You can get either Don Black's amazing new devotional, God's Word for Real Life, combining the Jewish and the Gregorian calendars. Each day corresponds with our daily Bible verses and truth shared on real life. Or you can receive volume two of the Word for Today DVD, featuring messages from pastors Matthew Cutter, Lee Kreicher, Scott Piper, and Nathan Puro. Call us today, tell us your choice, or check out the Real Life newsletter and simply mark the box for the gift that you choose. We love you, Cornerstone family, and we are here for you. How do you get motivated for the new year? The moms of Mom Talk share their goals for 2015 and their time-tested ways to stay motivated. <laughs> Well, 
Happy New Year, sweet mom yes. friend. We are so glad that you are starting off your new year with us here at Mom Talk. I'm Anna, and with me today are Michelle. Hi. Jacinda Jeez. and Carly. And we know this is the time of year where you start thinking about what you might want to change, yeah. what you want, might want to make better in this year ahead. But all of that takes motivation, right. doesn't it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, how do you get motivated? And then how do you stay motivated? Well, for me, to get motivated is the easy part. I mean, yeah. I usually just set a list. I'll post it in the fridge, on my bathroom mirror, anywhere I know I'm going to look. Mm -hmm. And I just remind myself every morning of what what I'm trying to do but at the same time I'm not perfect and I don't try to be perfect mm -hmm. so I allow myself to get off track right. you know and I don't beat myself up because the one thing you can sure. do is beat yourself up and then you can never get back on track right. Right. so I try not to beat myself up give myself a two or three days to stay mm -hmm. off track mm -hmm. and then jump back on that horse and get yeah. motivated again awesome that's good. Yeah. yeah that's good I like to get for me motivation is about knowing I have a higher purpose mm -hmm. and a higher calling too. Mm -hmm. And right. so that, that motivates me to keep moving forward and set in certain things ahead of me, like attainable things to get to. Mm -hmm. And I do that all through the year, really. And um, if I know where I'm going, I know the steps I gotta go to get right. there yeah. and what I need to do. And right. I just do them. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very much motivated by results and just right. getting things done. And I'm always like, okay, nice. let's keep going. Let's keep going. And, yeah, so it sounds you know, like it comes a little easily for Are you. Are you a list maker? It does, and I am a list yeah. maker. Yeah. And <laughs> what keeps me motivated is accountability. Right. I bring people That's along, huge. I tell them what I want to do. Job. And they help keep me accountable and motivated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's That's a great right. there's a great stat about that. Um, somewhere between thirty and forty percent is your success rate if you don't tell somebody what your goals are. Oh, yeah. um, it's in between sixty and eighty percent if you have somebody holding you accountable there you for go. a very specific goal. And I wish I wish I was more uh, spiritual than this, but I'm motivated by God. Just yeah. you know, right. Right. I'm motivated by God. I'm also motivated by my failure. Um, so Good. sometimes yeah. if I fail right. at something, that is a motivator. It's not always the best motivator, yeah. but you know, if I'm failing before God at something He wants, right. then mm -hmm. that's conviction, and so sure. you've kind of got to accept yeah. that. Right, Thanks, absolutely. Yeah. Well, what I was going to say was very similar to all of you, just that I have that deep sense of purpose and meaning yeah. in my life. Like I think about, okay, so I think about back in gym class when you're picking teams, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and I was always like the last person yeah. to be picked for a team. Team, right? <laughs> so when I learned that God has a team yeah. and he picked me Amen. for his team, <laughs> then wow, like that yes. was the best team oh, to be picked man. for. Right, right. And I know that if I'm wasting time, I'm wasting God's time. Right. And so that helps me to stay motivated. Is, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. We all have different goals that we right. have made for yeah. this new year. Yes. Uh, so I want to hear them. All right, so for me, I've had a very rough year this year, so I am excited about this new year for yeah, 2015. Good. And I've decided I need to make more time for me because if I'm not good, I can't be good for my children. You're so, right. so I am making it a goal for me to always take at least one night every week mm -hmm. to just have me time, whether it's me going out, me taking a bath, with bubbles, <laughs> maybe some yes. champagne, some we don't know. Say, there you but go. just taking time for me, you mm -hmm. know, and making sure that I'm making, you know, talking to God and making sure I'm continuously doing His will and raising my children right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Sweet. Good. I am not a goal setter for the New Year's. Okay. I've never liked it. I don't do it. And when I have done it, it frustrates me. Yeah. So I just don't do it. But I'm always setting things for myself to attain right. all year long. Right. right. Like right now, I'm about to start a uh, fast. I feel like I want to do, and I'm already doing it. Okay. So I'm yeah. not waiting for the New Year's. It's yeah. personally how I am. For some people, maybe goals is good, right. but not for me. I don't do New Year's goals. Right. But if for right now, what my goal is is for this year is I do want to get in the Word like never before, mm. and really just have that sure feeding right. all the yeah. time nice. on the Word, and that's. That's truly probably my number one thing yeah. that I'm, Such I'm a shooting good for. Goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Judy has a little video for us. Let's take a look. Here at the Dean's house, we have discouraging days. And one thing that helps me is these notes, these things that we write down throughout the year of ways that God's provided for us, how he's protected us, just encouraging everyday things to keep me motivated. It's really fun to read on New Year's Eve, too or just any time of the year. Your whole family can get involved in this. It's really great. That 
That was so oh, great, Judy. Yeah. Uh, you know, my New Year's goal, I, I so agree with you, Carly. I have a hard time with the year-long thing because mm -hmm. it's such a long time and like mm -hmm. such a race to run. Okay. I'm more of a sprinter, so yeah. I like to do shorter That's goals. Um, but my goals overall for the year, I would say, are making sure that I'm doing a better job of time management because mm -hmm. I have a lot I want to do mm -hmm. and I can do a lot, mm -hmm. but I can't do a lot if I don't know what, where it fits in my day. Right. Um, and I want to just do a better job of being an evaluator of myself. I'm trying to schedule mm -hmm. um, like quarterly just to take a look at my life, yes. go through a checklist of some specific things, you know, mm -hmm. am I staying where I need to be in so many areas right. of my life? Mm -hmm. And I think if, I, if I'm doing those and, you know, having those times throughout the year, the goals are different. Sure. You know, right now we're at the beginning of the year, right. but in July it's going to look different. Right. So, yeah. you know, it is what it is. Right. right. Absolutely. Good. Yeah. And for me, I think that um, one of my main goals really is to, to be praying with my husband more often. Mm -hmm. I've heard over and over again how important it is to be praying with a spouse, yeah. and that's something that we need to do and be held accountable for. Right. Um, but these goals, I try to pray about what the goals are supposed to be to make sure that my goals are God's, God's yeah. goals. Yeah. And I also, I brought this with me to share. It's a model that I try to follow when I set goals. It's called the SMART model. Right. And so when you set goals, make sure that their specific goals, that they are measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So that helps me with each goal on how to actually go about achieving that goal. So we wanted to leave you with a scripture. As always, some encouragement to, to put you out on your day uh, with some power from God's word. And the scripture from today is Philippians 3.12. And it says, I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. As you set goals for yourself this year, make sure to ask God first what his goals are for you. Why? Because his goals are best and will put you on the road to your extraordinary God-given destiny. When you feel like giving up on your goals, remember that you were not created to be a quitter. You were created to be extraordinary. You have been chosen and set apart for an incredible purpose. You do not have the option to give up, my friend. So as today's scripture says, press on and take hold of that for which Christ took hold of you. See you next time. Uh, oh, wow. That was quite a mouthful that we just watched, didn't we? It really was. I mean, I just think it's wonderful that these girls have made such wonderful plans. I don't think I was quite that sharp. Oh, Norma, I am so sure you were. You know, it's just always great to start off, as they just mentioned, at the beginning of the year. We just ask God, what are some new year, what are some goals? It doesn't have to begin this year, but it's, I mean, at January, but it's always great to start off with some goals and resolutions and motivations, too. I like what, I like what, the, what she said, smart. I yeah. thought that's a great way to establish any kind of a goal, that it's smart. But she said specific, measurable attainable, realistic, and had a timetable. That's pretty cool. Yes. I'll remember that. I, I hope I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of my goals I had was to read the Bible through this year. That's something I think fits into that SMART goal, and I don't think I've read through the Bible in a whole year, so I'm going to try to do it with the chronological uh, Bible. So that'll be pretty cool. I'm looking forward to it. Well, did you start on January 1st? No, I started yesterday. Well, that's all right. <laughs> You know, I just think sometimes people think they're going to start the first day and then they think, well, I didn't do it. Well, you know, right. maybe I could do it Wednesday or That's right. maybe I'll do it uh, on Sunday. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad you. Right. Like they said, you just don't give up on failure. You keep going and, and, it'll, and it's just that you're doing it and you're working towards something. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to tell you that now we have to stop talking about it what we're going to do right. and because we have a, a pastor and it's time for him to give our Bible study. Our teacher this week is Pastor Dan Willis, the senior pastor of the Lighthouse Church of All Nations in Alsip, Illinois. His series is called Right Now Faith and he begins now on the word for today. <laughs>
Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm Pastor Dan Willis from Chicago, Illinois, and I have the word for today. I really believe that the word of God is quick and it's powerful and it changes our life if we allow it. And I've been so excited to share this moment with you of what God has given to me. You know, some verses in the Bible, when you're a church kid like I am, I'm a church kid. All I know is singing, shouting, praising God, having church. I love preaching. But some verses can become a little bit cliche, if you know what I'm saying. For instance, in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and the first verse, ah, see right there, already, you knew what I was going to say. Now faith is the substance. I, I'd like to just do a little mini-series for the next few days on right now faith. Hebrews 11 and 1 for church kids is a little bit cliche, but I want to show you something powerful in these scriptures. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. The verse keeps on going. By faith Enoch. In verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. You know, over 2,583 times in the Bible, the word now is used. Now, in conjunction with now faith, when you think about the fact that 2,583 times the word now is used, it must be pretty important. So I'd like to drop the definition of it on you. Are you ready for this? The word now means in your present circumstance. So in your present circumstance, faith is the substance of things hoped for. I found that folks can live without a whole lot of things in life, but when we lose our faith, and the enemy knows that if we lose our faith, when we lose our faith, that's the moment that we defect from the things of God. Folks can live without a car, they can live without, uh, they can live without a lot of stuff, but when you lose your faith, you've lost the battle. I want to help you get it back right now. It's amazing to me how many are watching right now that would say, Pastor Dan, I really wish that you could pray for this for me right now. And we know the Bible says, now faith. We use that terminology. But the problem with me and probably a lot of us is after we pray, when we get up and we walk away, we act like we can wait for it for another million years. Like, all right, I prayed about it and I told God I need it now. In fact, if you were on the phone with your best friend right now, if you were texting somebody, you would tell them, you know what I need now? But then we, we walk away from it and we forget the now part of it. God wants you to put a demand on faith right now. Everything, my God, I feel like preaching just a minute here. Everything that Jesus did, he did in the now. In other words, when he went to the tomb of Lazarus and he said, Lazarus, come forth. Was he talking about in three weeks or was he talking about right now? He was talking about now. When he walked out on the, the helm of a ship, the stern of a ship, I'm a city boy, I don't know which one it is, but when he walked out in the middle of a chaotic storm, he said, peace, be still. He wasn't talking about six months from now, he was talking about right now. God is touched with the feeling of your infirmity right now. It's all right to pray. God, do it right now. In fact, look at Psalm 118 and verse 25. You know what the Bible says? I just noticed this scripture recently. The Bible says, save us, Lord, and send now prosperity. In other words, it's all right to say, God, I need a financial miracle right now. God, I need a healing miracle right now. Did you ever notice, even in the Lord's Prayer, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Bible says, give us, well, uh, what's it say? This day our daily bread. So it is God's will for you to pray. God, I need it right now. I want you to know as I minister to you this week on right now faith, I believe with all of my heart, God has allowed this moment for you and I to come together so I can be able to impart to you, not just information. We got enough information. Let me give an impartation to you. Throw your shoulders back. Put your head up in the air and say, God, now faith. Abraham did it by faith. Enoch did it by faith. And it was a now faith 2,583 times now. What do you 
need from God right now. Ask him for it and put it on there. God, I need it right now. God wants you to do that. That's right now faith. Well, kids, this is the word for today, and I'll see you back tomorrow. God bless you. We've got a pretty awesome lineup for you at the Cornerstone Block Party on Saturday. Yeah, we do. We get to hear from Scott Wesley Brown during our Living Room Concert Series, and then we've got a great film at the end. Yep, it's called Reconciliation. It tells the story of a father-son fallout and what they have to do to fix their relationship. So grab some popcorn and seat and join us Saturday from 6 to 9 for the Cornerstone, Cornerstone Block Party. Party. I rededicated my life to the Lord by watching Christian television. I was backslidden. I would not go to church. And I turned the TV on to Christian television. And he said, if you want to give your life you to the Lord. Jesus your Lord, ask him to forgive you of your sins. I was trying to get to the television to turn the channel because that's not what I wanted to hear. But the Holy Spirit overwhelmed me in that moment. And I fell on my knees and rededicated my life to the Lord. It transformed my life. Everybody doesn't go to church, but everybody watches TV. And at any given moment, people want to hear some good news. They want to hear about something that's going to transform them, something that's going to change them, something that's going to deliver them, something that's going to help them. And that's what Cornerstone Television preaches. It preaches the good news of the gospel. Do you love hearing God's Word on real life every day? Well, we have exciting news. Now you can get Don Black's new devotional, God's Word for Real Life, emailed to you every day. This free daily devotional email is ready for you on your desktop, tablet, or smartphone, so you can access God's Word anywhere. Go to ctvn.org devo to start your free subscription today. Terry, I, I saw you last night. Folks, you know, we get, we get a lot of people on the program who are authors, mm -hmm. and so we get the books to get the chance to look at them in advance. And last night, Terry was, was reading this book, mm -hmm. and it's our next guest book. And what is interesting is the title, Silence Satan. Right, absolutely. That was, that was a real um, eye catcher, or what do you call it? A Something that really grabs your attention. Grabs your attention. Grabs my attention. Mm -hmm. And I told you that we were going to talk about that when we first started the program. So joining us today is a powerful man of God. Kyle Winkler is passionate about spiritual warfare and overcoming the devil. He has an app that's called Shut Up Devil. <laughs> and he's here to talk about his new book, Silence Satan. Kyle. Brother, Yay. it's so good to have you here. Thank you so much. You know, I couldn't think of a better way to start the new year than to be with you guys exalting the name of Jesus and shutting the devil up. Amen. <laughs> well, you know, you say that and we laugh because it, it, we don't hear that very often. No, we sure don't. You know, we don't hear that very often. And I'm excited for you to tell our family at home about a little bit about your story. And then we'll spend a little bit more time about how to help them and us get engaged and witness fight. Mm -hmm. Certainly. So Absolutely. tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, first of all, the ministry that I have, Kyle Winkler Ministries, is really, it's a unique ministry because so much of my background involves involved technology. And so really I have a media and a teaching ministry. And so I stand at this unique intersection between media and ministry and technology and ministry, which is, you know, just so practical mm -hmm. for where we are today. So I'm just super committed with using whatever mediums I can to reach people right where they are with a power, with a, with a message of the power of God to transform their everyday life. Mm. So that's so much of my story, and then I just use that to relate to other people. Now tell us where you're from. Where, I'm, where... I'm originally from southeast Missouri. I live in Florida now, but uh, originally southeast Missouri, and you know, I was such a shy young boy. And so that, that of course, gets so much into to what I wrote and so much of what my message was dealing with rejection and the issues of being an outcast and a loner and all the mind games mm -hmm. that you start to play with that. You, you mean that you were so shy that people 
didn't think that you were shy, that there was something else that was going on? Yeah, absolutely. See, when I was in kindergarten and through the first several years of my elementary years is, I guess, just my personality just held me back in a lot of ways. They actually thought that I had a reading problem. And so they put me in a special group for reading help. I'd go out every week to a bus with a handful of students for reading help. A few years later, they realized that I could read just fine. It was when I was called on to speak, I was too shy to raise my hand, and so I just kind of froze up. And of course, that inhibited me from friendships and athletics and all kinds of things. And so I was this different person for so many people and they didn't know how to handle me. Right. And yeah. so that just kind of plagued me well into my adult years. That's, and you mentioned that as well. When you went, you felt God called you into ministry, you also had some thoughts that plagued you as well. Oh, absolutely. You know, every level of ministry from when I was saved at 16 years old up to when I first got into ministry in my young 20s and then full-time ministry, what I'm doing now for my own, which was my upper 20s, every single level was really a new devil mm. that I had to face. Insecurities and fears and guilt and you know all of that stuff just just plaguing my mind making me feel like I wasn't worthy mm. to be used in God's service. Wow. That's, well that's mm -hmm. what that's what I wanted to focus on for a few minutes is what is the stat strategy of the devil? What how does how does he well maybe if we, before we go let's talk about who is the devil first yeah. of all. That's a good one because there's so many misconceptions about right. that. A lot of people believe that the devil is this character that's operating all the, uh, orchestrating all the evil from his command center in hell, and he's this, this being with a pitchfork and red mm -hmm. horns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Bible actually says that the devil's not actually seen hell. He's never been there. Right. Mm -hmm. It actually says that hell is what's prepared for Satan and his minions mm -hmm. to be thrown into at the end of time. So that begs the question for so many people, if the devil's not in hell, then where is he and what is he doing? That's right. Well, the Bible says that he's on earth or in heaven doing one of two things. He's either opposing you and I, all the obstacles that we face, the attacks. That's him studying us, figuring out what our weaknesses and waiting for an opportune time to pounce. Or Revelation says he's the accuser. And he goes between heaven and earth trying to accuse us before God and then coming into our minds. And too often we are his audience trying to accuse us to make us feel like, we're not good enough. God can't use us. Mm -hmm. now, why, why is it that we don't recognize that there is a spiritual enemy? Mm. Well, today, you know, so many people want to put on these rose-colored glasses, and so much of the culture is against absolute truth and, of course, against what the Bible says, and so they don't even think there is a devil. That's right. So That's much true. less than any spiritual warfare. That's right. So they just go around thinking everything's just rosy and everything's, everything's okay. Mm -hmm. But, boy, that is, that is such a strategy of the enemy because all the while we're these puppets just being pulled along mm. by his every whim. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and the, Satan's, let's, let's break this down a little bit. Satan is one being. That's right. Not omniscient. That's right. Doesn't know everything. That's isn't right. everywhere. He's not under every rock. Not everywhere. Satan is one being. He was mm. originally, tell us about who, who Satan was originally. Oh, the Bible says that Satan was an angel in heaven, and it actually says he was the signet of perfection. That means the model of perfection. Mm -hmm. See, Satan was dressed in this robe mm -hmm. that reflected the very light and the very righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. And in that, he started to believe it was his own. That's what happened. I mean, if we're not careful, we right. can do the same right. thing. That's right. Right. That's we can right. take, this is my holiness, this is my righteousness. And that's what right. Satan did. It says he, he had these, this series of I wills, I will ascend into the heights. Mm -hmm. I will be like the most high. He got proud in that, mm -hmm. and God had to cast him down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he said, if I can't be the king of heaven, I'm going to try to be the king of earth. Now, what's interesting right. to me that Eden was established by God as his kingdom here on earth. Right. And, the, and Satan, he came. He was part of Eden. There was, he was part of the Eden. And then with the revolution in heaven, when a third of all of the angels were convinced must be a great liar. Okay. It must Father be a great liar. And to convince a third of the angels to follow right. him, they were all cast down onto this earth. So I think it's important at home to know Satan is one being and the rest are fallen angels. God has them over, there's more angels than there are fallen angels. Right. And God is God. And Jesus Amen. is, That's and the it. Holy Spirit Amen. is the Holy Spirit. Let's talk, we've got a few minutes left. Let's talk about how to recognize the attack of the devil and how to 
uh, be victorious. You know, so much of spiritual warfare is sensationalized these days when it is talked about, but really the devil, devil works so much more subtle mm -hmm. and so crafty. It starts in the mind for so many people. That's right. You know, the mind is the devil's playground. And I love what the King James Version says in Proverbs. It says, guard your mind right. because out of it flows the issues of life. Right. And isn't that, you know, so right. many of our issues that we face, our insecurities and our fears and all of that stuff is, this, is just plagued from in here. Mm -hmm. And the devil knows that where the mind goes, the man follows. Mm -hmm. So if he can trip us up with stinking thinking in here, That's right. then it just kind of flows out into every aspect of our life. You entertain fear, you're going to live pitifully. You entertain pity, you'll live pitifully too. You know, all of that stuff just comes out of us and it starts right in here with what he injects in us. Wow. Well, how do you turn that around? And in two minutes, I mean, this is a big <laughs> challenge. <laughs> sure. In two minutes, people who are watching a program that are underneath the thumb of the devil, right. yep. being in bondage to drugs, alcohol, sex, abuse, I mean, all kinds of bondages. Right. How do they find freedom? Well, and also thoughts. Remember, you were saying that fa he's a right. father of lies. And, and so and how many of that, that stuff yeah. ultimately mm -hmm. started in some thought. You know, they were covering yeah, sure something did. up, yeah. and, it, and the symptoms are those various things. But, but you have to know the truth of the Word of God. The answers are in the book. The father of lies has no power when the truth of the father is present. And so I had to realize that my past, the things people said about me, all the rejection, those were not my reality. The, the thing that's more real than anything else is what God says in his word. Yeah. God says that you're free as a Christian. Mm -hmm. He says that you're loved. He says that you're accepted. You're chosen. You are his handiwork. Right. So I had to get the word of God in me so much. And then I had to learn how to get it out of me mm -hmm. to speak it so that my mind would become renewed according to what it said. So the power of the voice of truth, which is the word of God, became more powerful than the father of lies speaking mm -hmm. all these things into me. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that, that has to start, folks, that has to start with a revelation. Yeah. You need a revelation. You have to have this encounter with God. You have to understand in the spirit, brother, that you have been set free. free. Mm -hmm. And it goes to the cross. It goes to the cross. That's, that was my revelation. I mean, that's what started this all. The Lord took me in the height of my spiritual warfare. I mean, I was beat down to tears thinking, mm -hmm. go do something else. And you were in ministry. And I was in ministry. Wow. It was my first step into public ministry mm -hmm. when all of a sudden all this stuff plagued me. The Lord took me to the cross where I saw the moment, 2 Corinthians 5.21, where he who knew no sin became my sin so that, so that's important, I might be the righteousness of God in Christ. Christ wow. Jesus. And that's true for you, friend. You, if you know Jesus is your Savior, you have been, his righteousness has been applied to you. You don't stand in your own goodness, in your own good works. It's in the blood of Jesus that you stand. And if the devil has his hand around your throat, he's a constrictor. He wants to, he wants to strangle you. He just wants to tighten, 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 tighten until you're destroyed. We want to stand in prayer with you right now. I want you to call 888-665-4483 and say, I want to be set free. I'm tired of this. I know Jesus is my Savior. I need to be free. You need that encounter today. You need to come back to the cross. Start this new year at the cross, and at the cross, you'll be set free. Mm -hmm. Call us, 888-665-4483. Don't delay. Don't delay, because we're going to come back, Kyle. We're going to come back, and we're going to pray. Absolutely. People call in. We're going to pray, Norma. Well, for you know, the one thing I, I think that everybody needs to understand, I read as much of your book as I could. Thank I didn't you. get it all read. But Jesus, God, the, we're loved. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not... When we feel put down or, or talked about or mm -hmm. doesn't reach the goal we set ourselves, we think, well, I'm no good. I can't do that. And that's a lie. That is, he is the father starts. of lies. That's right. But Jesus loves us all, and he has something special for each one of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's right. he does. That's right. And only in the power of the Holy Spirit can yes. you accomplish that. That's right. You can't do it in your own power. You can't just will it. You can't just set your goals and, and make it happen. If you could, you'd be God. He wouldn't have to send Jesus. <laughs> That's right. Jesus pays the price, friends. Yeah. He pays the price. So please take this moment. Here's an opportunity, a divine appointment for you to take a step. Call us, 888-665-4483, and say, I want to come back to the cross. Our prayer partners know how to pray with you. We'll pray with you here 
at the prayer at the table as we close this program. It's almost time for us to do that. All the requests are being called in. They're being taken right now. They're praying right now. Our prayer, uh, prayer, prayer line is busy. And while we get ready to pray, let's see what's on tomorrow's Real Life. Tomorrow on Real Life, Dr. Joe Viteri is back to share his wisdom on living a healthy lifestyle, on living well. Pastor Dan Willis continues his teaching series on living out our faith in the here and now on The Word for Today. And Don and Terry sit down with author Gordon Hairsign to discuss his latest book, Charging God's People to Live as Authentic Christians. That's tomorrow on Real Life. Well, we're back, and I just want to revisit, re, uh, Cal, that it is at the cross of Jesus mm -hmm. that we find victory. That's it. Mm -hmm. There's no other strategy. God set forth that strategy before the foundations of the earth. He was the lamb to be slain for the foundations of the earth. That's the only strategy that we really need. That's what we base everything off of. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Norma, mm -hmm. what do you say? Yeah. I just say that... Jesus sets us free Amen. and the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, we need the right tools to work with. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit is our magnificent tool that God <laughs> gave us. And so we need the power of the Holy Spirit to do mm -hmm. what he's called us to do. Absolutely. Yeah. And for me, it's, it's like we were talking about the, that Satan is the father of lies. And that sometimes these, he puts the thoughts into, our, into us. And that, but we have victory and we have a bigger power. God is bigger than these thoughts that we have. So we can be, we can be set free. There's a time mm -hmm. that you just have to get mad. Yeah, that's right. You got to get mad. You got to look around <laughs> yourself. Yeah, that's right. And, that's right. And, and put your foot down and say, I've had it. I'm done. I'm not going uh, to allow my, my body to control me. I'm not going to believe the lies that whisper into my ear. And sometimes they don't whisper. Sometimes they shout no. into right. your ear. Mm -hmm. And you just got to stand up and say, I'm finished with it in Jesus' name, and I'm not going to do it anymore. Amen. You just got to get to that place. And it's not in your own power. When you get in your own power, you're just going to do it again. But in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the blood, through the blood of Jesus. We've got prayer re requests. It's, you, you still have time to call in, 888-665-4483, right. mm -hmm. and put, put your prayer requests onto mm -hmm. the table. Uh, we've got a praise report. Patty called and said that she was delivered from alcohol yeah. after receiving prayer from CTD. She's God. so thankful for the ministry. Said it's the real deal. Patty, hallelujah. We want it to be the real deal. Amen. It's the blood of Jesus that makes it the real deal. And then again, Sally called, and she said that she, uh, she was watching our Signs and Wonders show. And Norma, you had a word of knowledge about a neck being healed, not in the right place. She feels tight around her neck. I remember that. She was healed. She what? was healed. Fan, Amen. Fan, supernaturally God. healed. Terry, tell us about some prayer requests. Oh, wow. Well, we have, as you heard at the beginning of the show, we have some snow. And so we have a prayer request for traveling mercies and snow and um, for Parkinson's and for financial needs. We have a prayer request and for a physical healing as well. Norma. Well, I have a request for someone needs a healing in their chest and deliverance from the spirit of infirmity. That's right. And then here's somebody that has gout, and that's painful. Mm -hmm. And I've got somebody here that's asking for safety for both of their daughter-in-laws who are pregnant, and someone else on a nebulizer who also needs deliverance from bitterness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Bitterness is, turns into cancer. It's a cancerous thing. It can Poison. just root, yeah. root inside of you. Um, Irene called and wants a closer walk with Jesus and deliverance from emotional issues and from fear. You know, fear is one of those things, brother, that is one of the leading uh, attack groups from the devil, yeah. is, to, is to throw fear at you. Probably foundation. It is, yeah. it is, that you, that you are going to be somehow destroyed. You know, fear is a lie. Fear is the opposite of faith. Put your faith in Jesus. Let's give the fear back to the devil. Yeah, there you That's go. what Jesus did, he gave it back to the yeah. devil. Uh, uh, Joy called and she's, uh, has acid reflux and a hole in her esophagus. Mm -hmm. We pray for healing in that in Jesus' name. Touch that in Jesus' name for a creative miracle in her esophagus in the name of Jesus. And then um, Lucinda, would you say that? I think so. Lucinda praying for guidance and she needs to find, uh, it looks like a church, mm -hmm. God, God to give her guidance. Amen. 
Norma, do you have any other? No, I just have the ones I shared with. But Kelsey's bringing more. Yeah, here we got some more. Keep calling. Amen. The, the, the number's on the okay. screen. We're here to pray with you, pray and stand with you in the power of the Holy Spirit. We're so Amen. glad Cal's here. He's going to, I'm asking him to lead this prayer in just a few, just a few minutes. Uh, Tara, I'm going to give you this oh, one. okay. Great. Michael right. called. Cal, I'll give you that one. Mm -hmm. Has family problems. Mm -hmm. His father is very verbally abusive. Mm -hmm. See, the thing, Michael, you would, I want you to remember that your heavenly father is not that way. Absolutely. So try to understand that he loves you so much and he's not like right. that. That's right. You're, pray for your dad. Pray for him to be saved. Pray for him to be delivered. But don't think God is that way. He's not. He loves you. He wants to care for you. Put your heart in his hands. Mm -hmm. I know you want your dad to love you too, and he will. He Amen. will. Amen. Terry. Well, that's something you talked about was that the word of God is greater than what you're hearing on the outside. So just really read and just uh, words of, of comfort, um, affirmation for you. And um, for Linda, she wanted prayer for prophecies to be filled, and she's having some bowel problems. So we just need to pray for he her healing. And I've got one here from Arlene who's, who's praying for uh, drugs, deliverance from mental illness. Mm. Well, let's go. Put, okay. put it in here. And Cal, we've got a minute. So would you just lead us in prayer for all you know, these I, people? I just want to start from the victory of Christ. Amen. So Father, I thank you right now for your victory, Amen. for the victory that you accomplished 2,000 years ago at the cross of Jesus Christ, yes, where that God. bondage breaking blood yes, of Jesus God. was Hallelujah. shed for all of us for the Hallelujah. cleansing of sin, for the deliverance yes, from all of these issues, from sickness, Hallelujah. from disease, from mental issues, yes, from financial issues. Yes, Everything is covered by that blood of Jesus. So Thank I just pleaded on every single person, yes, on every prayer request right now, yes, those who are watching right now, yes, and I just thank you so much, Thank Jesus. You, Lord. Thank you for that victory that we Thank claim you, it right Lord. now today in faith. Thank you, we Jesus. stand upon the truth of what your Thank word you, says. We are accepted, Thank we are you, loved, Jesus. we are made right yes, in God. Jesus Christ. In Jesus. We thank you thank so you, much thank in you your precious, you. mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Jesus is worthy of our praise. God sent his son. We're so glad that you joined us today. Fantastic program. Cal, thank you for coming. Thank you so Come much. back with us yeah, again. Absolutely. Silence Satan. We'll put it on the website, and then you can find out how you can get it in your own library. I recommend that you get it and you read it. Get tools in your life. God bless you. See you on the next Real Life.